This is your professor, Dr. Benjamin Cabrera. I'll be discussing today all about the thyroid gland. Okay, this lecture is taken from uh, the sixth edition of Bernard Levy of Physiology. So let's start with the anatomy of the thyroid gland. Well, the thyroid gland is composed of the right and the left lobe. This is the right lobe and this is the left lobe. And that sits anterolateral to the trachea. Normally, the lobes of the thyroid gland are connected by a mid-ventral isthmus. Okay. And the thyroid gland receives... Uh, a, a rich supply of blood and it's drained by three sets of veins in each side the superior the middle and the inferior thyroid veins the thyroid gland receives sympathetic innervation that is vasomotor. It means it's um, more on the reaction of the blood vessels, but not secretomotor. It means it doesn't have anything to do with secretions, no stimulation of secretions via uh, the sympathetic innervations. Okay. Now let's talk about the thyroid follicle. The thyroid follicle is the functional unit of the thyroid gland. It is around, uh, this is a thyroid follicle. It's around 200 to 300 micrometer in diameter. It is surrounded by a single layer of a thyroid epithelial cells. And the lumen is filled with collo colloid, which is composed of thyroglobulin. Also contains parafollicular cells. Okay, or called your C cells. Okay, so this is a thyroid follicle, a uh, diagram diagrammatic uh, representation with your uh, ep thyroid epithelial cells, and here that follicular lumen that contains the colloid okay. these are your follicular epithelial cells and you see it's, it's a rich uh, blood supply there's the blood vessels that surrounds each uh, thyroid follicle now let us talk about the Reduction of your thyroid hormones. Okay. Your thyroid hormones are iodothyronides. These are these are usually formed by coupling of two iodinated uh, tyrosine molecules, of which. Okay. To the result into two types of hormones. The majority of all the hormones produced by the, in the thyroid gland is T4 or your 3535 tetra iodothyronine or otherwise called your thyroxine or your T4 and 90 percent that's it uh, it forms 90%, okay? And 10% of the thyroid gland production is the T3 or the active form. This is your 3535 thyroid And a, a formation of a reverse T3, which is 
less than 1%. This is your 3535-iodo-tyronine, otherwise called your reverse T3. Normally, all three hormones are secreted at the same proportions as they are stored in the gland. In the formation of your uh, thyroid hormone, you will majority of which are converted, your T3 majority of which are converted from T4 by the action of your type 1 deiodinase. And this one, this conversion, peripheral conversion, occurs in the liver, kidneys, and skeletal muscles wherein these are organs with high blood flow and rapid exchange with plasma. This one, uh, this supply circulating deeply for uptake by other tissues. In converting uh, your T4 to T3 using your, we have three types of the iodinases, okay? Your type 1 diiodinases is expressed in the thyroid are relatively low affinity and they are increased in cases of hyperthyroidism. And there's a the one found in the central nervous system, which is your type 2 diiodinases, and these are expressed in the glial cells in the CNS. In the, and in the tytotropes of the pituitary. Your type 2 diiodinase acts as an axis sensor which mediates the ability of your circulating T4 to give feedback on TSH. Then it maintains the intracellular concentration of T3. Okay, Even the peripheral levels of T4 falls below uh, the normal levels and your type 2 diiodinase are increased in cases of hypothyroidism. And the last would be your type 3 diiodinase which are your deactivating diiodinase has high affinity to the inner diiodinase and converts T4 to the inactive reverse T3. And this one, this type 2 diiodinase are, is known to be increased during hypothyroidism. So your type, one, type 2 will be increased in hypothyroidism. Your type 3 is increased in your hyperthyroidism. So, what is a, the role of iodine or iodide in thyroid physiology? So, your iodide are actively concentrated in the thyroid gland, the salivary gland, gastric and lacrimal gland, and even the choroid plexus in a steady state. So, an average uh, person in just roughly around 400 micrograms daily as uh, US data and uh, which is uh, can meet the minimum requirement for uh, the levels of uh, iodide ingestion for adults the recommended levels would be 150 microgram for children it would be 90 to 120 microgram and for pregnant women, it should be 200 microgram. This is the this is the a very nice diagram. 
that uh, tells us or describes to us uh, the distribution of the iodide that is taken daily okay uh, an average adult can ingest around 400 microgram of iodide and this one will be later on will be distributed in the extracellular fluid wherein 320 microgram goes directly to the urine to be excreted while the 80 microgram will be used in the thyroid wherein your 60 micrograms of that 80 micrograms will be distributed to the tissues the red cells okay and 10 micrograms of that 60 will be metabolized and excreted in the stools and that uh, 50 will go with the urine and so as with the 20 that goes to the renal system so what does it mean what is ingested the amount of ingestion will be equal to the amount of excretion So, this is a very good illustration of the synthesis of a thyroid hormone. Um, the iodide and your thyroglobulin okay, will undergo enzymatic degradation to form your thyroid hormones, which are later on to be released in the blood. So, here are some of the uh, definitions. When we say organification, it just simply means the ability to trap and incorporate iodine into the thyroid globulin. And then, there's uh, a an, an, uh, determination, especially a test, for the function of the thyroid, that is, we use a thyroid-active iodine uptake for your RAIU, wherein we give a tracer dose of iodine 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, 3 iodine is administered, then RAIU will be measured by placing a gamma vector on the neck 4 to 6 hours and at serially at 4 and 6 and at 24 hours. So the normal value of your RAIU uptake should be uh, there should be a presence of RAIU tracer dose at around 15% after 6 hours. Then there should be 25% uh, concentration after 24 hours. So what are the abnormal levels of RAIU? A high RAIU meaning more than there's the still presence of your radioactive iodine at around 60% after 24 hours indicate hyperthyroidism. However, a low RAIU, which means less than 6 to after 24 hours, indicate hypothyroidism. In Graves' disease, this is, is a condition that is associated with thyroid toxicosis, wherein your iodide is trapped, organified, and released as hormone very rapidly. In Graves' disease, 6 hour RAIU is high while your 24-hour RAIU is low. Then, your seventy percent of your circulating T4 and T3 is bound to your thyroid binding globulin and 10 to 15 percent 
is bound to a specific thyroid binding protein called your trans uh, trans tyratine and 15 to 20 percent are bound to albumin and three percent are bound to lipoprotein so this is the a percentage of the uh, binding of your thyroid hormones to the different proteins in the body again 70% of your T4 and T3 is bound to your TBG or your thyroid binding globulin. 10 to 15% is bound to transthyretine. 15 to 20% are bound to albumin and 3% is bound to uh, lipoproteins. Okay. So what are the physiological effects of your thyroid hormone? Okay. Our thyroid hormones have cardiovascular effects. So, the cardiovascular effects of your thyroid hormones are very important because your T3 increases, okay? So, it has a direct and indirect action. Okay? Your T3 increases cardiac output thereby ensuring sufficient delivery of oxygen to the tissues. The resting heart rate and the stroke volume are also increased. The speed and force of your myocardial contractions are enhanced and the diastolic relaxation time is shortened. So in here, okay, you have your indirect and direct effect of your thyroid hormones thereby uh, producing an increase in your heart rate and cardiac output thus increasing that volume okay so that's the cardiovascular effect of your thyroid hormone okay so what are the physiological effects of your thyroid hormone Okay. How about the effect on the basal metabolic rate? The effect of the thyroid hormone and the basal metabolic rate is that it increases your basal rate of oxygen consumption and increases heat production. It also increases the glucose and fatty acid uptake and oxidation and increases your lactate, glucose, and fatty acid triglyceride recycling. Okay. So what are the physiological effects of your thyroid hormone? Okay. How about the effect in thermogenesis? Uh, thyroid hormone increases heat intolerance. That's in the case of a hyperthyroidism. And in cases of hypothyroidism uh, or in the low levels of your thyroid hormone, it produces cold intolerance. So these are all dependent on availability. Okay. So what are the physiological effects of your thyroid hormone? Okay. How about the protein turnover? Thyroid hormone can increase the release of a muscle amino acid and increase protein degradation. And that and also conversely it also increases protein. Okay. So what are the physiological effects of your thyroid hormone? Okay. Respiratory effect. Uh, it stimulates oxygen utilization, which in results in the enhanced supply of oxygen and increases uh, resting respiratory rate. 
the uh, it also increases your minute ventilation and the ventilatory response to hypercapnia and hypo. Okay. So what are the physiological effects of your thyroid hormone? Okay. Skeletal effects, it increases glycolysis and glycogenolysis, decreases uh, glycogen and creatine phosphate by an excess of your T4 and T3. Okay. So what are the physiological effects of your thyroid hormone? Okay. And these are the effects on the autonomic nervous system and particularly um, action. There's a synergism between the catecholamine and your thyroid hormones, wherein your T3 may enhance sympathetic nervous system activity by increasing the number of beta adrenergic receptors which are found in the muscle and your cyclic AMP. Okay. So what are the physiological effects of your thyroid hormone? Okay. The effect of your thyroid hormone on weight and maturation. Your thyroid hormone promotes growth and maturation. And your thyroid hormone is important for normal neurological development and proper bone formation. Okay. So what are the physiological effects of your thyroid hormone? Okay. For the effect on the bone and heart tissue and dermis, the thyroid hormone stimulates endochondral ossification, renal growth of bones, maturation of epiphysis, uh, epiphyseal bone centers, the T3 stimulates uh, the adult bone remodeling and the progression of tooth development and eruption are also uh, facilitated or uh, stimulated by your thyroid hormone. So, so as with the normal cycle of growth and maturation of the epidermis, hair follicles and males. So, see, uh, your thyroid hormone is involved in a lot of processes in okay so what are the physiological effects of your thyroid hormone okay survival so this is the effect on the nervous system the thyroid hormone regulates the timing and pace of the development of your central nervous system and it uh, results in enhanced wakefulness, alertness, and responsiveness to body stimuli, awareness of hunger, regulates memory, and learning capacity. Okay. So what are the physiological effects of your thyroid hormone? Okay. Go. So, now, let us talk about hypothyroidism. Oh, this is a My thyroid keeps me up at night. Now let's talk about hypothyroidism. Your hypothyroidism is just a condition where there is insufficient production of your thyroid hormone and they can be either be of primary, secondary, or tertiary in nature. Uh, primary hypothyroidism is described as a very low levels of your T3 and T4 while you have a very high TSH. This is true in cases of primary thyroid gland problems okay so it's peripheral so you have your thyroid gland cannot uh, manufacture or produce your thyroid hormones that's why 
will give, it will give a negative feedback to your brain and, to, and your brain will produce a lot of your TSH. Your secondary and tertiary uh, conditions of your hypothyroidism, both your thyroid hormones and TSH are abnormally low. So this is outside your thyroid gland. Cow. Now, let us talk about hypothyroidism. Oh, this is a good. My thyroid keeps me up at night. Now, let's talk about the hypothyroidism in the fetal and early child. This is called your congenital cretinism, which is quite uh, not that common anymore because of the uh, law for the newborn screening wherein uh, it's part of the newborn screening the screening for congenital hypothyroidism so this is a picture okay, of brothers wherein one is smaller with coarser face in a larger tummy okay and his younger brother okay this is the younger brother so your congenital catenism will manifest as severe mental retardation short stature incomplete skeletal development coarse facial features protruding tongue or macroglossia weight gain without increasing caloric intake slow metabolic rate and cold intolerance Cough. now let us talk about hypothyroidism oh, this is a good my thyroid keeps me up at night so the cretinism these are conditions of a severely stunted physical and mental growth the symptoms are patient is dwarfed with severe mental defect, coarse dry skin, deficient hair and thick, retarded skeletal coat. Cough. Now, let us talk about hypothyroidism. Oh, this is a good. My thyroid keeps me up at night. Okay, based on metabolic rate. And sometimes, with the, with the absence of newborn screening, your patients may initial presence with decreased muscle tone or hypotonia. Cow. <clears throat> now, let us talk about hypothyroidism. Oh, this is a good. My thyroid keeps me up at night. Thyroidism is an insufficient uh, state of insufficient. Uh, thyroid hormones, okay, hormone production, and worldwide, this is the most common cause is would be iodine deficiency. Because thyroid hormones are important for the development, and hypothyroidism secondary to iodine deficiency remains as the leading cause of preventable intellectual disability. In areas with iodine sufficient regions, the most common cause of hypothyroidism would be Hashimoto's thyroiditis, which is an autoimmune condition. So, this is a very good representation of hypothyroidism. You have cold intolerance, receding hairlines. Oh, look at your the one beside you. Patient and IDD edema loud lung expression, sympathy, thick tongue, results to slow speech, anorexia, little hairs and nails, okay. hair loss, apathy, lethargy, dry skin, portion scaly, muscle aches and weakness, and they usually will manifest with constipation. Okay. For females, uh, hypothyroidism can also manifest as menstrual disturbances. 
So the late nickel manifestations of hypothyroidism would be subnormal temperature, tachycardia, weight gain, decrease of uh, thick and skin, and cardiac complication. Comparison to the state of high thyroid levels. Okay. So, high thyroid levels would manifest as heat intolerance, fine straight hair, bulging eyes, or proposis because of the overproductions of your uh, retroorbital fat pads, okay? facial flushing, and large thyroid. Cardiac manifestations will be tachycardia hypertension, weight loss, muscle wasting, tremors, diarrhea as uh, compared to your hypothyroidism which is constipation, clubbing of fingers, there is tremors. For, for females, there can be breast enlargement and menstrual changes or amenorrheas. Sometimes it will also manifest as localized edema. So let's talk about thyroid receptors, thyroid hormone receptors. There are two genes that encode the classic nuclear thyroid receptors: your THRA chromosome 17 and THRB at chromosome 3. Okay, your THR encodes your TR alpha. Your TR alpha is one is a bona fide thyroid receptor, which are expressed in cardiac and skeletal muscles. These are the dominant thyroid receptor that transduces thyroid hormone action on the heart. So it is your uh, THRA. Okay, on your THRB. It's found in your chromosome 3. It encodes thyroid receptor beta 1, which are expressed in the brain, liver, and the kidney, and thyroid receptor beta 2, which has high affinity to receptors for your T3, and they are restricted to the pituitary and critical areas of hypothalamus, cochlea, and retina. Resistance to thyroid hormone syndrome, there would be uh, your TR beta 2 subtype, and they will manifest as goiter, short stature, decreased weight, tachycardia, hearing loss, monochromatic vision, and decreased IQ. So, these uh, TR subtypes are of clinical importance because. Inactivating mutant genes has been found to cause clinical syndromes manifested by resistance to thyroid hormones. The most common mutation would be your TR2 beta okay, with the following uh, clinical uh, manifestation. Now let's talk about your thyroid releasing hormone and your thyroid stimulating hormone axis. So this axis is the most important regulator of thyroid gland functioning. The immediate actions of your PRH the uh, SH axis would be the induction of pseudopod extension, endocytosis of colloid, formation of colloid droplets, iodide uptake, and TPO activity increases. Okay. Intermediate effects would occur after a delay of hours to days 
can involve protein synthesis and expression of genes. And long-term effects could be could lead to hypertrophy and hyperplasia of your follicular cells, and proliferations of capillaries, tidal blood flow increases. Okay, so those are your long-term effects. So this is uh, a very good representation of the regulation of your thyroid hormone. The pituitary will produce your thyroid stimulating hormone and it will produce your thyroid gland. And there will be organification and uh, of iodine it will produce your for your thyroxine, 90% of, of the thyroid hormones, and these are carried around the body to control metabolism. Okay, and that will be to a normal level of your thyroxine, and this will uh, produce a negative inhibition to your that okay so there's negative inhibition this is going to produce if your levels of your uh, t4 or thyrox uh, thyroxine is adequate to produce a lot of t3 however if you have a problem with a primary problem with your thyroid gland and there will be a production of your thyroxine it will now give a positive feedback to your pituitary, thus increasing your TSH. So, in primary thyroid conditions, problem, they have a very low T3 and T4 levels and high TSH. Unlike, okay, if you have secondary or tertiary, where maybe you have a problem with the pituitary, there's no production of your TSH. If there is no production, there will be no stimulation of your thyroid, so your thyroid hormones will be very low. Okay. In cases of Graves' disease, okay, wherein you have antibodies to the receptors of the SH, okay, so those antibodies mimic the SH and they will now, the thyroid will produce a lot of thyroxine. And it will give a negative feedback to your pituitary. So in Graves disease, you have a very high thyroid hormone, but very low TSH. Okay. In case of uh, Hashimoto's thyroiditis, okay, that's an example of primary thyroid problem. There in your your uh, there will be immune complex and reaction that will destroy your thyroid plan thus it will have a low levels of your t4 and low levels of t3 it will be on the positive feedback and there will be an increase in your psh so so that's a, a primary thyroid condition so an important word to remember is the wolf chakoff effect which is uh, discovered by doctors Jean, Jan Wolf and Israel Lycon Shakov, the University of California. The reduction of your thyroid hormone levels caused by ingestion of large amount of iodine. Uh, an excess iodide, uh, iodide transiently inhibits thyroid iodide organification. Thus, it inhibits thyroid function in the presence of iodide plasma iodide excess and it guarantees regular thyroid hormone secretion in response to variable dietary iodine levels. That's it. And don't forget. Thank you. So don't forget to subscribe, click the notification button, 
hit the thumbs up subscribe and share to this channel so that you'll have uh, i'll always be notified for new lectures that, uh, that i will be posting so i'll be posting the subjects of physiology microbiology pediatrics and pharmacology so have a great day Go. So, no let us talk about hypothyroidism oh, this is a my tired kids up at night 